next meeting to order. All right, Kelly, we're waiting for you. All right, if everybody could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, if we could have a roll call for this evening, please. Yes. Mr. DeFrank? Here. Mr. Fries? Here. Mrs. Glenister? Here. Mr. Ganahl? Here. Mrs. Klinger? Here. Mr. Cuzo? Is absent, Mrs. McKelvey? Here. Mrs. Nemitz? Here. Mr. Spinner? Here. I have eight in attendance. Okay, the, uh, this evening, do we have any special recognitions we or do. presentations? We do, we have several this evening. I'm, I'm throwing our cameraman a, a curveball so he knows what's happening here. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to keep you off camera. <laughs> All right. So we have several recognitions. We're going to start with... Lynn. We have several recognitions. <laughs> We're going to start with our retirees. Um, you'll see on our agenda tonight that we have quite a few retirees, and we are so grateful for our staff members who choose to be here in Salisbury with us. We know that our staff members have a lot of options. There are a lot of places that you could choose to invest your time, your energy, your passion for teaching and learning. And we are so appreciative that you chose to do that with us. So thank you for, for doing that. And we're gonna recognize three of our staff members tonight. We're gonna start with Mrs. Best. <laughs> So I'll start with a couple of words about Mrs. Bez. Um, I had an opportunity when I was teaching to work with Mrs. Bez, and uh, Donna works as an instructional assistant and was always um, our data person, right? <laughs> data entry, data sorting, um, data evaluation, so always appreciated Donna's efforts, um, appreciated Donna's willingness to work with students and assist them to stay focused, stay on target, meet the learning goals and objectives. Um, and also uh, work collaboratively with other staff members. So very much appreciated Donna's efforts, and we do have um, a resolution that we're going to hear read, which apparently I'm going to I'm going to give it a go here. <laughs> so whereas Mrs. Bez has completed over 19 years of distinguished services and is an instructional assistant at Salisbury Township School District from 2002 to 2022. 19 years. <laughs> Whereas Mrs. Bez assumed many responsibilities in supporting the needs of students and the school community, including but not limited to small group instruction, assisting in the school library, cafeteria, and as a personal care assistant for students. And whereas Mrs. Bez provided effective support to general education and special education classrooms, showing professionalism and compassion at all times. And whereas Mrs. Bez worked diligently to ensure that our classrooms were safe and conducive to learning, and whereas Mrs. Bez worked in conjunction with our librarians to help our learners access resources. Whereas Mrs. Bez cared for each and every child, helping them to learn and succeed while showing a genuine interest in each child's academic achievement, emotional welfare, and social growth. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of Salisbury Township School District tenders Mrs. Bez the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her untiring efforts on behalf of our public schools and for her devoted and successful labors in the cause of public education. And be it resolved further that this resolution be made part, permanent part of the record of this public meeting, June 15th, 2022. Congratulations, Donna. Jennifer would 
not be happy with me if I didn't give you the bow. <laughs> You're probably watching. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. Thank you. I have to take my glasses off so I can see. A resolution on your behalf. Whereas Mrs. Johnson has completed over 21 years of distinguished services as an instructional assistant at Salisbury Township School District from 2001 to 2022. And whereas Mrs. Johnson was an outstanding instructional assistant who supported students in small groups, in the cafeteria and individual students to meet their fullest potential. And whereas Mrs. Johnson assumed many additional responsibilities throughout the building to support teachers, to provide the best instruction possible for their students and the school community. And whereas Mrs. Johnson brought a sense of pride to schools and stood as a role model to both staff and students. And whereas Mrs. Johnson provided the support to our learners with special needs that allowed for growth across school settings and disciplines. And whereas Mrs. Johnson brought a sense of dedication and commitment that exemplifies what it means to strive for student success. And whereas Mrs. Johnson cared for each and every child, helping them to learn and succeed while showing a genuine, genuine interest in each child's academic achievement, emotional welfare, and social growth. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Salisbury Township School District tenders Mrs. Johnson the sincere thanks an appreciation of the board for her untiring efforts on behalf of our public schools and for her devoted and successful labors in the cause of public education and be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting, June 15th, 2022. So I'll just share a couple of a couple of thoughts. So um, most recently, I would see Tammy pretty much every time I walked into the elementary building between the hours of 11 and 1 <laughs> in, the, in the cafeteria, in and out. Um, I would catch her there, but also had a chance to work with Tammy over the years in different capacities and roles. Um, appreciated Tammy's participation in our professional learning sessions. One of the things that I've done throughout the district time here um, was lead sessions in this room with our instructional assistants, and you always like to keep it real. So <laughs> I really appreciate your contributions. So thank you very much for being here with us. Our third retiree, Ms. Trudy Murray. I think we should clap. <laughs> we should clap. And we have a resolution for you as well. Okay. All, all three of our retirees are from Salisbury Elementary School. And I'm kind of offended because I just started there this year. They're all leaving. <laughs> um, anyway. Whereas Mrs. Murray has completed over 12 years of distinguished services as an ESL teacher at Salisbury Township School District from 2009 to 2022, and whereas Mrs. Murray created a positive and nurturing learning environment to promote student achievement by fostering a classroom community in which cultural differences are acknowledged and appreciated within the schools where she taught. And whereas Mrs. Murray understood the importance of building relationships with her students and used her positive rapport and relationships to push and challenge her students to learn the components of the English language. And whereas Mrs. Murray saw the potential in every ESL student and work tirelessly to help each student achieve his or her best. And whereas Mrs. Murray leaves the teaching profession knowing that she provided insight, expertise, professionalism, care for others, and a love for her craft. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Salisbury Township School District tenders Mrs. Murray the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her untiring efforts on behalf of our public schools and for her devoted and successful labors in the cause of public education. And be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting, June 15th, 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
weirder than you were expecting, right? <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, so I love the last line of your resolution, passion for your craft, right? Because somehow Trudy would bring smiles to kids' faces who didn't understand a word of English, right? They would be sitting in front of you and somehow you're going to help them through their day and make sure they feel comfortable and cared for in our schools. And I just marvel at your ability um, to really make that happen for our some of our most challenged learners because they come to us with very limited English skills. So thank you for your passion for your craft and for dedicating so much time to our district. Thank you. Lynn, I'd, I'd just like to point out real quick, I did some quick math and don't hold me to my math, um, but the three women we celebrated tonight, 52 years of service to, to, to the uh, district. And if you include two others that are on the list, Barb Jandel and Sue Knight, it's 104 years of service. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's dedication at its best. Thank you. And we did um, recognize, we are also recognizing Barb Jandel, our library and media teacher, librarian, and Susan Knight, um, also very appreciative for their service to the district and dedication um, to our learners. So thank you to them as well. And we have an additional recognition tonight, and I don't know that this is something that we've ever had an opportunity to recognize in the district, um, but I would like to invite Mr. Mike Del Prior up here. <laughs> um, Mike. And Mr. Brackett as well. Um, Mike recently was recognized by PSEA, our labor union, um, Eastern Region, and he was recognized for the Pre Presidential Legacy Award. So that's pretty impressive to be identified as someone from our district um, who's leading our support staff union, and we wanted to celebrate that. Um, you probably saw the article. In this, there's a nice write-up in the Salisbury Press with the full information. Maybe you will like an extra copy. You can, you know, put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> no, no, no throwing darts at it. Um, but when I read the write-up in the article and I had the chance to talk to Bill about it um, and reflect on, on your work, Mike is always a person that comes to work with a smile. Like things may be going really well and things may not be going really well, but somehow he shows up with a smile, uh, willing to serve the district and our kids, and I am so appreciative of that. And I know that that's not easy every day, right? <laughs> let's, let's face it, it's not easy every day. Um, but he's very kind and very caring and always gets the job done. I think what's really impressive about um, Mike is the district and also as a leader of his organization and an informal leader in his organization, um, that kind and caring dedication and leading with that, leading with that smile and the pride that you have in your work, in your team's work, in our district. And that's um, really appreciated. Um, Mike's honest, he's a hard worker, he's respected by his peers. And I love this line that um, you were recognized with. His leadership has been both respected and appreciated by PSEA members and district administrators alike for decades. And that is so true. And that is really something to be proud of. So congratulations. I invite Mr. Brackett to say a couple of words too. <laughs> Only a couple, Bill. So I'm going to add to your list. I'm going to add to your list 40 years. So Mr. Del Prior has been with the school district for 40 years. And everybody that's passed through these doors from teachers to faculty to students knows Mr. Mike Del Prior, knows the type of employee that Mike Del Prior is, is knows the type of man that Mike Del Prior is. His main drive for coming to work every single day for 40 years and continuing on, his main drive is what can he do today to make it the best facilities for the students? That's what you have working for you. That's what was recognized by PSEA. Congratulations, Mike. It's a, it's a small um, token Falcon proud, because if there's anyone who's proud to be a Falcon and proud to be here, it's definitely Mike. Thank you very much. Congratulations. That's quite an honor. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here tonight. And uh, um, it's just great to see the dedication in the district. Could we, could we
could we grab photos? Kelly, maybe you could grab photos in the hall before everybody leaves. You don't have to leave, but before you, <laughs> would like a photo. <laughs> So um, before we move on, though, I have to go back and do something I forgot to do in the beginning. Yes. Um, I'd like to thank Jennifer Kirk. She's sitting in the back there. She, so I'm looking at my phone. She's texting me to tell me to make sure I do this. And bear with me. This is the first time I've, I, I've done this, so I might forget a thing here or there, and I'll do my best. So pursuant to board policy 1B.5, all meetings of the Salisbury Township School District are audio and video recorded. Earlier this evening, we had an executive session uh, for the purpose of uh, discussions of personnel. Um, so now we can move forward. I know, thank you. Uh, no student representative reports tonight, I'm assuming? Correct. Right. Any changes to the, the changes or additions to the agenda? Seeing none, great. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Good. Motion moves. Uh, citizen inquiries and comments pertaining to agenda items. We have none, says Ms. Kirk in the back. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to uh, approve the following minutes? Those are the minutes from the work session from May 4th and the regular board meeting from May 11th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion moves, thank you. Treasurer's report. We have a treasurer's report this evening. We do. Okay. That is the May 2022 treasurer's report. Okay, do we need to, do we need to vote on that? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, uh, can I have a motion to approve the 2022 treasurer's report? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> we always vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Motion carries. Can I have a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Report of the Secretary of the Board. Um, I would just mention uh, quickly that we had an update from PASBO the other day on the state budget. Uh, they still, of course, do not know what the final numbers are going to be. They're still projecting an increase in BEF between three and 300 and 500 million and in special education between one and 300 million. Most of the update was to update the calculator I had given you previously because in the first version, they didn't have all of the ADMs up to date. All the reports weren't processed with charter school kids being given credit back to districts and whatnot. But because of our size and the few children that we have in those kinds of programs, it really didn't change our calculation at all. So the calculator I gave you previously is still what we're looking at. Obviously, our bigger question was, um, no matter what that amount is, they increase it, how are they gonna sustain it going forward? Uh, knowing that most of it is uh, federal ESSERS funds. So they didn't really have an answer for that either. But <laughs> that obviously is, is the big elephant in the room at this point is how that will look going forward. It's a question, Thank you. question we all want answered, so. Yes. All right, uh, moving on. Um, turn the floor over to uh, um, Ms. Clare. Good evening. I've got big lists tonight. <laughs> But I would like to move under um, the curriculum area, curriculum and technology, items 2.1 through 2.11, I believe. The first one is our graduation list, our list of our graduates. 2.2 .2 is an adjudication of two students who we found do not have to be removed from our roles because they don't live in the district. Uh, then we're... Uh, 2.3, we're approving an agreement between the district and the community services for children, which is our pre-K counts program. 2.4 is the approval of an agreement between the CLIU 20 and our district to provide Title I services for non-public schools. 
from July 1st to September 30th of this year. Uh, 2.5 is the approval of the Seton Hall University Project Acceleration at the high school program for the 22-23 school year. Uh, 2.6 is our dual enrollment between our district and Moravian University for the 22-23 school, school year. 2.7 is to approve the list of community business and businesses, business people and parents on the steering committee for a comprehensive plan. And 2.8 is to approve the special education plan with one change, which has the movement of a speech class to the APOD. And 2.9 to 2.11 is to approve the technology apps, uh, the contracts for Zern, FastBridge, and Learning A to Z. So I make a motion to move 2.1 through 2.11. I have a second. Second. Any questions or concerns? Seeing okay. none. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're for the operations portion of the evening. We're going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Freeze for that portion. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a bigger list. <laughs> it's June. It's June. It's June. Uh, uh, my first item, actually, uh, I'm going to I'm going to separate out. Uh, that is item 3.1, which is the 2022-2023 uh, uh, final budget approval. Um, I believe I'm going to need a roll call vote on that item. Um, is there anything uh, that, Ms. Stafford, you would like to summarize before we bring that to a vote? Uh, for the budget, yes. I, I would just reiterate, and I know I sent this uh, in writing to the board earlier, but for public information, uh, between the time of the proposed final budget being um, offered for public inspection, we have received our proposed allocations for our federal grants. So those amounts have been updated both as revenues and expenditures, which is neutral in terms of millage. Uh, at about $191,000 on each side, revenue and expenses. Also, we have kept up to date with staff as we've been hiring them and making those changes uh, and tweaks in the budget. We also did receive the second round of fuel bids. As you recall, the first round, there were no bidders for the tank wagon deliveries on gasoline. Uh, that is also on the agenda tonight uh, for ratification by the board. But that update was made in the budget. Unfortunately, we're um, about $3,000 short from where we project the number of gallons we will need. We have enough in the budget to cover what we committed ourselves to, uh, but based on the actual projection of what we'll use, we're about $3,000 short. But again, that could change depending on the actual usage and uh, the number of times that we need to get the tank filled. So uh, in the size of our budget, that's a, that's a pretty minimal uh, shortfall at this point. Um, again, salary increases and changes in staffing have all been incorporated uh, up to last week. So it's as up to date as it can be at this point. <laughs> um, so I will ask for a second and then I will open it up for questions. Can I have a second? Second. All right, are there any comments or questions? Yes, um, I'd still like to discuss the librarian position. Um, I was trying to understand what our options are because we don't know, correct? We don't. We still don't know our state level of funding. That is correct. Um, I want to know how we can keep that position, that and also the part-time Spanish teacher. You know, that's. I, I still would love to have both of those stay in the budget. I understand if we if we take them out, it's hard to put them back in if we get money, correct? Like, I don't even know the process for that. Like, if we say now we're not going to have those positions and then we say, oh, look, the state gave us, you know, X number of dollars, we could add that back in. Is there a process for that or? There is budgetary reserve that, that is in the budget that would allow additional spending. Right. Yes. And, and am I correct that the but if we kept those positions in, the budget would be balanced? We are now, like, saving some money. We're... we're um, 
Can you explain to me how that works? Like, uh, I just don't understand some of the terminology. No, the either. budget is balanced as it was presented right. actually last month. Okay. Um, there are changes, but again, it was trade-offs with uh, filling some of that hole mm -hmm. that we had for the fuel. Um, we did not have enough in the budget last month to cover what okay. we anticipated usage of fuel knowing that we would have changes. So any changes and savings that have occurred in the last month have been put toward the fuel. Okay. But it is balanced as it's being presented. And if, and the cost of keeping the librarian position was? Now you're asking me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head, I'd have to go back and look it up. Uh, I just, you know, I just know from previous experience in this district, once it goes, it goes, and we won't get it back. And I would like to, to not do that if at all possible. Is there any other conversation while Christine looks that up? Well, I, I have a question for you, Becky. If, and this is not trying to be confrontational at all, but if, and I, I'm the last person who wants to cut anything, I, I really do, but if it's n not this, what is it then? I mean, and. Well, that's what I guess I'm asking. Like, maybe I misunderstood how we talked about it, but I thought that cutting those positions were an additional savings on top of the, the balanced budget? No, no, no they were all trade-offs. Okay. So at this point, to add those back in, you would either have to estimate some other kind of funding, your state uh, and special ed funding, and you know, again, that, that's all a gamble, or you would have to cut something else okay. or use fund balance. And yeah, so that might be what I was thinking. I was using the fund balance part of it. Um, and how does this generally play out, you know, in the in the years previous, where we just don't know the state stuff and it shows up, you know, after we have to vote on this, we just have no way to predict what that's going to be, correct? No, and it, again, typically that would just whatever money you would end up getting from state and special ed would just flow into fund balance because there wouldn't have been budgeted expenditures against it. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I guess, do we, are we, it sounds like we're waiting on some information. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to find, I don't remember the date of the last uh, sure. update on that. I don't know if this is the wrong question to ask, but if we would get enough state funding to at least put the librarian back in. I know we've been trying to hire the part-time Spanish teacher for the whole year, which is difficult, so. If we would get enough money from the state to put that librarian back in, would that be a possibility or no? So I don't know what you mean by possibility. There's three ways you can pay for it if we, is this what you're looking for? Yeah, I have it. Um, as Christine said, you would pay for it out of budget re budgetary reserve or you would reduce something else, right? Uh, I, or, I, I think what she's saying is once we get the final numbers from the state and then the state, the numbers are better than we, we thought right. they would she be. She said it might go in fund balance, but could it possibly go towards a librarian? It could. I mean, if that's what the board decides, I would not advocate for hiring Spanish now because schedules have been created, classes have been made, so that would have an impact on the schedule, which is already, which is already started. If the board supports, um, utilizing additional state funding for a librarian, that is something that we could operationally do. Yeah, I understand. Post and the, hire. Uh, the Spanish is, has been an issue almost the whole year, yeah. and that it's, that's out now. I, I guess my question would be if it pays for next year, how does it get paid for the year after that, the year after that, because we know we'll have a deficit we know we know we know we're adding to the deficit next year. I, that I, I understand the, the question. I'm just trying to understand how we continue to address the deficit. It, it's it's a one-time addition, you know, back into our budget this year if we get additional state funding. That's not guaranteed year after year. So I, that's what I would like to understand. That, and that's as I said earlier. That is the real concern. I, I think there is a good possibility you're going to get. A relatively decent increase in state funding, but how are they going to sustain that going forward? It, it probably is a one-time boost. 
So th with with the with it being a one time boost, right? And your you know, as your comment was about going into the fund balance. Again, as we're trying to prepare for those future deficits that we are know are eventually going to be here in the pre in the upcoming years. Again, it, this would be leaving that position and that flexibility for future to make sure that we can start preparing for the debt service that we're planning to take, correct? I believe that was my understanding during the two work sessions ago, right? If you're gonna talk about incurring additional debt. Right. Sure. The difference uh, in that position between the person who was retiring and replacing them with a, a step one person was about $80,540. Yeah, and I guess I'll still just say my position is I think, I mean, not that that's not a significant amount of money, but once that position is gone, we will not get it back. And um, we're faced with these kind of decisions every year at this point because, you know, we're just, this is this, the nature of public ed, I guess, right, in Pennsylvania. We have increasing costs. We have no, you know, we have no no new growth in our district until we settle it out with the hospital, or you know, they change our busing situation or our charter school reimbursement. We're this is the conversation every single year, and it, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't change. And there's going to be no magic answer. But I just, I really, I just feel like it's a very important position to have. And and once it is off our list, we will not be seeing it come back. So. To me, that's worth it's worth it for that amount of money. I agree. I, I, I do understand, and, and I have similar feelings. But to and correct me if I'm wrong, this is a position that is not filled right now. Correct? Like, the, like it's it's there's nobody in that position, so. I would r rather utilize that position in this way to make sure that the rest of our, 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 our teachers' positions are secure. Um, so that's just my, my, my two cents on it. Meaning they're secure, you mean going forward if there were a budget issue coming up next year? I'm just yeah. saying right now, I mean, because if, if it's not this position that's vacant, it could be a position that's not vacant that we'd have to look at for those funds, for the 80,000. You mean next year? I'm saying for this budget coming up, the budget that we're voting on tonight. I guess I'm not following what you mean. If you, if you, it's eighty thousand dollars to replace that that librarian. Right. If that eighty thousand dollars would have to come from somewhere else, is that another position we're that's current? Out of the fund balance potentially, or out of you know, depending what come, happens with the state. Do we have any more questions? Um, all right, we we have a we have a second. I guess we need a roll call vote. I'll second. Mr. DeFrank. Yes. Mr. Freeze. Yes. Mrs. Glenister. No. Mr. Ganahl. Yes. Mrs. Klinger. No. Uh, Mr. Cusa was absent. Mrs. McKelvey? Yes. Mrs. Nemitz? Yes. Mr. Spinner? Yes. I have six yes votes, two no. Motion carries. All right. Um, all right. So the rest of my list, um, items 3.2 through 3.22. Um, 3.2 is the fund balance, we have to uh, commit portions of the, 20, of the now 2021-2022 fund balance uh, <clears throat> as a result of the recent audit. Um, we have 3.3, which is budget transfer authorizations. Uh, I just mentioned three, uh, the local audit, which was completed. Uh, thank you for getting that done. Uh, 3.4. Uh, 3.5, Homestead Farmstead Resolution. Um, 3.6 is the plan con, plan con consulting services. Uh, 3.7 was the audit as a result of plan con. 3.8 um, is our continued services from Ms. Stafford who's agreed to continue to uh, work with us. Thank you for that. Uh, 3.9 uh, was the dugout 
uh, cert, uh, replacements uh, for the uh, varsity softball team. This is not the fence. This is just the dugout uh, that will be put in next year. Uh, 3.10, uh, the aforementioned fuel bid. Um, 3.11, uh, the CSIU software, which is, I, I believe, our uh, finance software. Uh, 3.12, uh, there's a number of general fund deposits we need to make uh, going into next year. 3.313 is payment authorizations uh, for the summer. 3.14 is the bus patrol agreement, uh, which was presented at our last working session. 3.15 is the lunch price approval for the uh, uh, next school year. Um, 3.16, uh, some uh, per capita tax adjustments. Uh, 3.17, Birkenheimer exoneration. Uh, 3.18, some adjustments to the school per tax list. Uh, and the 20, and 3.19, the 2022-2023 uh, um, certification of the per capita list. Uh, the compensation agreement with Kids Peace is 3.20. Um, 3.21 is the Kids Peace um, contract. And 3.22 is the emergency instruction time template. Before I ask for a second, any questions there? Um, can I have a second on all of these items? Second. Um, any comments? No comments? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have a comment? Uh, yes, I would like, uh, I, I'd like uh, item 3.14 pulled out. A, sec, a separate vote, please. Okay. Um, am I able to pull that out at this point? Okay. All right. So I'm going to adjust the. Have I have a motion. Am I? We had a second already. Well, I think we're informal enough that she can pull that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm going to uh, remove my my previous. Um, Thank you. And I'm going to adjust to just carry forward items 3.2 through 3.13, and then I'm going to skip 3.14, and then I'm gonna bring forward 3.15 through 3.22. Can I have a second for all of those? Second. Any comments? All, all in agreement. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, now we have item 3.14, which is the bus patrol agreement. Um, can I have a second for that item? Second. second. All right. Any comments on the bus patrol agreement? Yeah, I, clearly, I'm going to vote now. So, yeah. Okay. I, I expressed it last time what my concerns were. I don't feel the need to repeat myself. Okay. So. All right. All in favor of item 3.14? Aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Nay. Nay. All right. Two opposed. Motion carries. Uh, that is it for the ops portion of the meeting. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Freeze. All right. So next, we're going to go over back over to Mrs. Klinger for the personnel committee. You're busy tonight. I know. <laughs> this is a long. Well, hold on a second. Be before we move on, is, is everybody good? Do we need just this is kind of a good. We're rolling. We're rolling. Let's keep rolling. Is keep it moving. Just checking everybody's <laughs> temperature. Okay. Okay, <laughs> for the personnel tonight, we already, uh, four, uh, I'm going to move 4.1 through, I think it's 4.53, but what this includes is the retirement resolutions, which we already recognized this evening. Then 4.2 to 4.5 plus 4.7 are summer employments, um, hiring through the hiring authority, extended school year, Title I, and SOAR. 4.6 through 4.8 is the retirement of two custodians. 4.9 through 4.17 is the hiring of our new CFO, Mrs. Dawn Nickisher, a custodian, a full-time art teacher at SES, a full, full and part-time IAs, um, part-time PE at, it's not part-time PE at SES, it's at SMS, I call it that, but it's at SMS, 
um, full-time school psychologist, full-time teacher at SES, a full-time emotional support teacher at SES, and summer custodians. 4.18 uh, are the, the hiring of the building subs for all three buildings. 4.19 is the hiring of an accounts payable person. 4.20 through 4.24 are resignations of our mail courier, four IAs, a special education teacher at SMS. 4.25 through 4.35 plus 4.37 are assignment transfers um, between buildings in the district. 4.36 through 4.41 are part-time and full-time custodians, IAs, and speech therapists. 4.42 are our, are our ex, excuse me, extracurricular position appointments and reappointments. 4.43 um, are the hiring of our induction program mentors. Uh, 4.44 through 4.46 is the approval of the administrator's salaries. Mm. Then 4.45 are this um, approval of the confidential non-union support staff salaries. Um, we have two FMLA teachers uh, and administrative assistants. Um, I don't know what those numbers were. I missed those numbers. What numbers were they? That's towards the bottom. What um, number are you looking for, Carol? What'd you say? What number are you looking for? Um, after 4.46 and 4.45. Then you have your independent contractors. Yeah, uh, it's 4.46 is an FMLA return. Then we have 4.47 through 4.50 are, are, are independent contractors for psych, psychological services and OT services. 4.51 are consult, consultation services for speech. 4.52 is an agreement between our district and the elite educational therapeutic support for bilingual speech and language evaluations. And finally, 4.53 are our substitute rates for the 22-23 school year. I think I got them all. <laughs> you sure. Did I miss anything? You're good. <laughs> okay. May I have a second? Second. I just want to say congratulations, Carol. That was very well done. <laughs> and as succinct as it could have been, so well done. <laughs> Okay, any questions, concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion's passed. Thank you. So I just want to say real quick, I want to just re reference 4.9, the, the, the hiring of Don Nickasher as the CFO. We just wanted to welcome you aboard. I know some of us might be more excited than others to have you on board, <laughs> but we're all really excited to have you here. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, she, she, Me. Oh, I see. Ooh. Okay. Christine. I, I, I looked that way. She's getting closer to reach. Christine is very excited. I will tell you, there was a... Uh, Bounce in her step today. <laughs> but it does go without saying, though, that you, you were a huge help to the district in the time that we needed you most. And I know all of the board members, I'll speak on behalf of all the board members, thank you. And we look forward to looking to working with you in the future. Um, there are some big shoes to fill, but um, we know you can fill them. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Congratulations, Don. I don't know if you'd like to say a couple of words. You're welcome to. You got to use the mic. I just wanted to thank you all for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to come in hitting the ground running. And Christine was actually the person that hired me when I first started at the district in 2012. 
Um, I, we had a brief period of time together, but she threw a lot at me and I absorbed a lot and I learned a lot in my time here and I look forward to coming back and challenges, uh, new opportunities and everything else that comes along with the territory. But I just want to thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Welcome. Okay, moving right along. Uh, up next, uh, Mrs. Glenister uh, with the Policy Committee. Yes, so I guess we're going to be discussing Board Policy 1C1 about adding a Finance Committee. So does anybody have any questions? I mean, do we just... So this will be the second reading, unless there are questions or concerns. Um, we did put this on the table last month. And the purpose was to just formalize the addition of a finance committee that we anticipate starting in, I believe we said September. Okay. Um, can I make a comment? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to note that like we could have run finance as an ad hoc committee, but um, I thought it was important to add it to this policy to show its importance to all of us and to the district. Agreed. Becky said agreed. I'm not sure if you could hear her. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yep. Heard her. Okay. So we need a motion. We have a motion to approve policy 5.1. One. You need a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, you all done, Becky? Yep, thank okay. you. All right, up, up next is myself um, for the student activities um, portion of the evening. So uh, two things on the docket tonight. Uh, we need uh, votes on both of them. First one is uh, item 6.1, which is a cooperative sponsorship agreement with uh, uh, Allentown Central Catholic um, to, um, prov to allow uh, students in junior high and, and senior high school um, to play lacrosse, both uh, men's and women's uh, lacrosse there. Um, just giving more opportunity for our kids. I see Monica motioning to me in the background there, so before I put my foot in her mouth, um, she can come up and correct me. Just high school, Mr. Gunnell. Just high school, I'm sorry. Um, it does, so we will have to correct that because it's actually on the agenda as junior varsity as well. Um, so it'll give the opportunity for kids just to have more opportunities to get involved, try a different sport. Um, so, and then. Uh, so Monica, to confirm junior varsity and varsity, you said high school, it's junior varsity and varsity, is that correct? JV and varsity. Uh, correct. JV and, that, yeah. Yes. yeah, that's what I was okay. gonna ask. I was reading without my glasses on, which was a mistake. I think we're good. I think we got it. That, that much, much better. Um, second item on the list is, and Monica, but don't go too far, you might as well stay up at the mic there in case we have any questions, uh, is an agreement to extend our partnership with uh, St. Luke's for our um, sports medicine needs. Um, they've been a great partner thus far, uh, as far as uh, supporting all of our student athletes in everything they need from uh, uh, strength and, and agility training to um, injuries on the field. Um, so this is actually just gonna move our partnership forward and it's actually beneficial to us. Do you have anything you wanna say, Monica? Just uh, been, been very happy with our partnership with St. Luke's. Um, it's great. They provide us um, all, all kinds of things and our athletic training support, our sports performance coach, you touched on it, Joe. We're in a really good place with St. Luke's. So sure. compliments to Monica because this um, draft has gone back multiple times and every time I looked at it, there was something else in there for us and for our kids. So thank you for the persistence in. Uh, You're welcome, but uh, very much thank you back to you because multiple sets of eyes on it. Lynn, you caught a few things that I didn't see, so I'm grateful for that. And um, I know we, we just jumped through lacrosse quick, but Dennis Census, the athletic director from Central Catholic was on the Zoom and, oh. and he uh, also was you know very excited at the partnership that we're gonna have with lacrosse to allow our girls and boys the opportunity to play, to try out for Central Catholic's lacrosse teams. Well, Dennis, if you could hear us, thank you very much for your, your help in the process with that as well. A absolutely, we're looking forward to the, the partnership and uh, ha having your uh, athletes join ours here at Central Catholic. 
And just to, it, just to comment, it's an extension because we already have the cooperative sponsorship with Allentown Central Catholic and field hockey in the fall. So uh, we've extended it and it's, it's something we're both very excited about. Long time coming, right, Dennis? A absolutely, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I guess while I have a moment, I just want to thank uh, Salisbury for the cooperative sponsorship that we've had over the last eight years in field hockey, and, and we're looking forward to reciprocating in, in the sport of boys and girls across. Great. So thank you, Central Catholic, and thank you, St. Luke's. So um, uh, can, I have a, so can I have a motion for 6.1, 6.2? So Second. 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 Okay. Like lightning, Carol. You were like lightning there. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motions pass. Thank you. I just wanted to say I think I think the partnership with Central Catholic is great. It's a great opportunity for our kids to try out lacrosse. And I know that the partnership with field hockey has been a blessing for both schools. Yeah. So it has helped us out as well as helping them out. So I'm glad to see this extended to another sport. Thank you. All righty. So uh, moving on to the reports. Um, Laura, uh, CLIU. So they, we have met in the past few weeks, but I was not there because I had COVID. So I do not have a report from the meeting. Um, so I am just going to uh, move 7.2 and 7.3. 7.2 is um, an agreement with the IU for um, overdrive, which is um, a program to allow students to access um, digital library books, in essence, and also an, uh, an agreement with the IU for the discovery streaming um, service. And I know that uh, within that is mystery science, which is extremely popular among the elementary school crowd. So I'm very excited to see that on here. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, All in favor? Yeah, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> right now. Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. <laughs> Motion passes. All right, moving on. Um, Mr. DeFrank, do you have a, a report from LTRIC for us tonight? Yes, I do. Uh, at our last uh, board meeting on June the 2nd, uh, I was elected uh, the new vice chair for the 22-23 school year coming forward. We did view, review our open enrollment uh, for the summer. We were flat, continuing both the first semester into the second semester summer session, and we remain flat for the coming year, although it's early for the fall, and we're hopeful that we'll gain, be able to gain momentum and uh, actually have a positive or growth in enrollment. Uh, I will have, and we will have out soon, probably a July-August time frame, uh, update on our building, uh, what we are looking to uh, move into, and I'll have that for the board's review, and that should come again in next, either I think we're voting on July uh, as far as uh, sending those uh, overview to the boards out there for their review, and you should have it by uh, August time frame. And that is, uh, uh, and I need to move uh, 7.5, uh, which is LTRIC's dual enrollment agreement with Salisbury Township. Uh, so I so move. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussions? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion passed. Thank you so much. Great. Okay, we're going to uh, kick it back to Mrs. McKelvey for... Um, Another another update from CLIU. Uh, yeah, this is just an reapproving an agreement we uh, approved either last month or the month prior for um, translation services. Uh, there was just a slight rate increase, so I move item seven point six. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. All right, thank you very much. All right, so now we're gonna turn it over to uh, Mrs. Nemitz for an update from LCTI. 
Yes, I'm going to keep it very short and sweet tonight. Um, on Tuesday, May 31st, LCTI celebrated their annual senior recognition night. This night has been um, virtual the last two years, but they uh, were back at the PPL Center for this celebration this year. Um, both Mrs. Funy Hatton and I attended and it was a really inspiring evening. Um, the students sit um, on the floor of the arena by uh, their program area. Um, there are a lot of uh, awards given to individual students for outstanding accomplishments. And then each program is called up uh, one by one to receive their um, certificates. So, and if I counted correctly, Salisbury had 22 students complete their LCTI education this year. Great. And that's my report. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Nemitz. Um, any questions for, for, for Sarah? Okay, uh, Mrs. Glenister, we're gonna go back to you for uh, a PSBA Legislative Policy Council update. Yes, so not surprisingly, they're talking about the budget. <laughs> uh, so they're doing like a three week campaign. They're trying to get people to contact their legislators. Week one was talking about special education, asking for a minimum of $200 million increase needed. Week two, which I believe is the week we're in right now, they're trying to get people to contact and discuss the mental health needs of students with a minimum of 60 million needed. And week three is career and technical education with a minimum of $25 million increase um, driven out to the CTE programs. Uh, they're also discussing like uh, on the federal level, it says the US Department of Education is seeking an additional $600 million to recruit, support and retain teachers because we know that's been a problem in its 2023 budget request. They're asking, the, the education secretary is asking that policymakers, including those at the state and local levels, make significant investments in the teacher workforce, and we're seeing that here as we're having trouble finding people to fill some positions. Then we're back to uh, charter school funding. So the, there have been a couple of different, um, lately a couple of different groups getting together to talk about curbing payments to charters. Um, there were suburban superintendents that met outside of Philadelphia saying that uh, they're frustrated by mounting payments their districts have been making to send students to charter schools. They called on legislative leaders to back changes that would cut their costs. The Montgomery County superintendent, school board members, and a bipartisan group of state legislators came together to demand charter school reform. After two years of virtual learning, school districts know it costs about $5,000 per student for high quality online learning. Cyber charters with their abysmal student performance rates are billing districts two, three, and four times higher. So they're trying to fix that issue again. And charter reform is bipartisan. Locally elected volunteer school directors in 433 districts out of, I believe, 501 in the state elected by the same constituents who voted for their legislators have now passed resolutions calling for charter reform. So it's kind of an across the board issue. And just one sort of random fun fact I was reading on their website is that 46.5 is the percentage of rural, rural ninth grade students who would aspire to obtain a four year college degree, which I thought was interesting that yeah. it's about 46%. So that is what I have. Call your legislators, try to get them to pass the budget. Go ahead. Go ahead. And you have a couple items to move there. I do. Uh, I do? 7.9. Uh, 7 Ah. And 7.10. Okay. So I will ask to move those, which is the board secretary appointment and a voting delegate resolution. Second. St All in favor? Well, oh, do we need to, does she know it? So we are appointing these. Dawn would certainly be aware that she's being appointed to these as CFO. Um, representing the district. Christine is currently appointed through July 1, I believe. So um, this would sort of fill that gap once we hit July 1. I just wanted to make sure you knew we were putting you to work already, so. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Resolution passes. Great. Thank you. Uh, solicitor report, you do not appear to be Christine Roddick, so. No, I apologize. <laughs> well, the less the solicitor has to say, the better it is for the district. So all I have to say is it's good to be back. I don't get back to enough meetings. So. Thanks for being here, John. Yeah, thanks for being here, John. And that brings us to the superintendent report. 
Ms. Feeney Hutton. All right, so a handful of items tonight. First, want to celebrate our graduates. Um, for those of you who had a chance to attend, it was an absolutely beautiful evening on the field, um, complete with uh, sun and smiles. We had a jumbotron, each student's name was displayed and um, they were able to grab some photos. I couldn't see it because I was on stage, but I saw some community members who posted Facebook photos. So I was like, wow, that really looks fantastic. So appreciate uh, the work that not only our high school leadership team did for this, our, some of our support staff members at the high school, and also our custodial staff who um, had a great deal of additional work to get that um, stadium ready to go. So very appreciative of that. Thank you for those of you who were able to attend our leaders and our board members. And from that, uh, the other extreme kindergarten registration, thanks to our SES staff um, for developing and, and facilitating this. There are about 50 students. We do have additional screening dates. So if anyone knows anyone who's going to kindergarten, now is the time to call the school so that we can make sure that we get you registered. Yeah, all right. um, in the last couple days and also tomorrow, our fifth grade team worked with our building leadership team as well as our transitional learning support staff uh, to create some act activities today for transition and yesterday. Um, this morning, I met the bus down here. We provided a, a shuttle to help make it more accessible for students uh, to get to the other side of town. And as I was standing there, the kids were excited to share that they learned to make pancakes from scratch. And I said, I don't know what you mean by from scratch. And she said, well, with flour. Oh, OK, with flour. Um, so they were really excited. And you know, thanks to the fifth grade team and Rob and, and Ken and um, all the other staff members who work to create that opportunity and really in a hopes to help students feel more comfortable going to the middle school, help with the transition, give them a chance to get um, connected with their teachers. And uh, we want them to have a positive experience. Lynn, they're not using a hammer on the pancakes there, are they? I, that's not pancakes, that's something else. Making sure. And there are a bunch of activities they had planned, but I don't want to say what they are because some of them are a surprise for tomorrow, and I'm not sure. I don't want to blow the surprise. I'm not sure what that one is. Ken or Rob, do you know what that one is? Oh, oh, okay, yes, yes. They look like they're having fun. Want to provide federal grant funding. We got this information. Christine shared a little bit. Um, so just want to share what the funding's for and how we uh, intend to use it. We are, uh, Kelly will be writing the grants. Um, they're due, well, you, they're not due on July 1st, but you can't allocate funds until you submit them. So we submit them by July 1st um, for, so that we have the option to allocate funds. For Title I, we had a decrease in our allocation, and that was largely driven by the 2020 census. So this is the first year we're using the census. There's a decrease in um, poverty in children ages, I think it's 5 to 17. So that's where that decrease came from. Um, anticipated expenditures using this the same way that we've used the funds in the past. Title II is largely for um, professional learning for uh, staff, professional staff and support staff. Um, money is also driven by that formula. Title III, uh, another decrease that affected us as well. And Title IV is a slight increase. Title IV is used for technology resources, social emotional learning, well-rounded well education. We saw an increase there, and the reason we have an increase there um, is because it's directly tied to your federal funding for Title I the previous year. So that money was increased, so that's why this one is increased. Um, Title III, I did not mention, is for supporting our ELL students, our um, we use it for staff sal salaries for additional hours, um, some supplies, and, and PD. So work, Kelly's working on those grants. Um, one of the items that um, the board approved is filling current positions. So these are the positions that we still currently have. These are the positions that are in the budget as they exist right now that are not filled. Um, some of them are still being posted. Some were posted and went unfilled. And um, We'll continue to work to fill these. Any questions on those positions? <laughs> 
And we would also be filling anybody who retired, who resigned between now and, you know, to be transparent for the board, we would also be filling those positions. If they resign tomorrow, we're going to post tomorrow and try to fill it as quickly as possible. Uh, finally, we did post our comprehensive plan. Kelly and I reviewed the results today, bless you. There were about 15 people who filled that out and gave us some good feedback, things to think about. Um, so um, for the most part, people are agreeing with our four big ideas and um, positive about, about the plan. And that's what I have. Thank you very much. Anybody got any questions? Okay. With that said, any new business? Seeing and hearing no. Citizens' ear, in, inquiries and comments, I believe we have none. Okay. Uh, and I don't have to review any of that, do I, Lynn? Nope. Okay. And then um, upcoming meetings. Our next uh, next regular board meeting will be Wednesday, or are we, are we? So at this point, we don't anticipate needing that board meeting. Okay. So our next scheduled regular board meeting will be Wednesday, August 17th, um, and we look forward to that. So with that, I'll look for uh, a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second? Second. Okay, all off. I want to keep going. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you everybody everyone. who's joining nice. us at home. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being patient with me. And um, I don't think I ever called for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>